Greetings, my name is Neo Second, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Higurashi When They Cry Chapter 3. In the last episode, on our way home from the Farood Shrine, Keiichi decided to broach the topic of, uh, of Satoshi's disappearance with Mion and Reina. And to be specific, how there would have to be some kind of record if uh, of Satoshi transferring out of school and all that stuff, if that's indeed what actually happened. And it kind of put Mion and Reina both on the spot. And then after a little bit, they both they both started to uh, basically tell Keiichi about Orishiro-sama's curse and how they think it's played a role in uh, Satoshi's disappearance. Ren in particular was uh, especially uh, convinced uh, convinced that's had to that's one dolly what happened because well, something like that's happened to her too before she transferred back to Hinamizawa, as we also learned during uh, this during this discussion and then afterwards Mion basically uh, made a uh, Keiichi promise to uh, not bring up the topic of Satoshi's disappearance in front of Reina again and well try not to also do the same for Satoko and especially and especially uh, bringing up the real reasons why he might have disappeared in front of Satoko because well Reina would will would pretty much get hysteric would get, would get well, not hysterical, but very fiery about it, is one way of putting it. And while Satoko, well, it's to maintain her happiness. Of course, we agreed, and then we all went about our separate ways. And then afterwards, I learned a couple interesting things and the tips that I unlocked at the end of the, ch of the last chapter. That being that, number one, Shion seems to harbor some uh, romantic feelings towards Satoshi, which would explain her early reaction to Keiichi bringing, up the, bringing him up having transferred why she was frankly kind of hostile about in her reaction and number two apparently uh, Satoko's uncle has come out of the woodwork after, after having after having been out of the public eye for so long and is basically going around town asking questions so I uh, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that I'm, I'm willing to bet that we're probably gonna run into this guy at some point. And from what I've, and, and from what I recall of uh, him and Satoko's aunt, neither of them were particularly kind towards, uh, in, in their treatment towards Satoko and even Satoshi. So chances are, they're, he's, gonna, I'm not gonna like, I'm not gonna like the guy one bit once we finally see this guy in person. But I suppose only time will tell if we actually see the man face to face. So, without further ado, I'm going to hit continue and let's start our brand new day. Ohayo, Keiichi. Morning, Keiichi. Oro. My. What time did you go to sleep? I did not sleep well last night at all. My mother could tell from a single glance. I had the worst dreams. Nightmares. Very ominous dreams. One after the other. Again and again. I woke up after each one. But could never even remember a fraction of what they had been about. But. It was like those dreams were predicting something unpleasant. I think those dreams of yours are on to something, man. And I woke up in a terrible mood. Hey now. Every day has been common fun before today, right? Those days should continue on and changing. And yet, anxiety was the only emotion growing within me. Why was that? Nightmares reflect on your own anxiety. They show an uneasy mind that which you wouldn't admit to normally. Yesterday, I remembered the ominous conversations I about Satoshi I had with Shion, Mion, and Reina. Right. My mind felt like it was in a black fog because we talked about that. If I. If I lived every day without causing a fuss, my reward would be ever more peaceful days. I understood that. 
So why did I cause such discord? Because you just can't keep that curiosity of yours in check, my friend. Don't know how many times you gotta keep asking yourself this before it finally hits you. But now that I thought about it calmly, a simple verbal slip on my part could possibly change the world. Yeah. As long as I'm sorry for doing it and never talked about it again. There's nothing that anyone can blame me for, right? If I didn't already if I didn't already know if I didn't already suffer through the first two chapters, I would be inclined to uh, I would be inclined to uh, at least agree with you, at least in part. But well, I'm pretty sure someone will blame you very strongly for this. Besides, how, can my, how would my fate possibly change? Just because I talked about that. Because you are asking very uncomfortable questions, my friend. So uncomfortable that it might make people homicidal. Nothing was going to change. Yeah. Nothing would change. Nothing would change. Nothing would change. <laughs> That's a creepy smile. If you're still half asleep, then go wash your face. I finally cheered up enough to smile, and Mom slapped me right back down. Now I was irritated again. Thanks, Mom. There wasn't much time left before I had to meet up with Reina. I frantically started to get ready to go to school. Have a good day. Watch out for cars. You know, I just had a thought. Well, Reina broached the topic about the, the curse and Satoshi bef before I have a chance to. In which case, well, hey, if it ends up, uh, if that conversation ends up carrying on until we go to school and Mion sees it, I, we can be like, well, hey. We kept our promise. I didn't start this shit. She did. There's barely any cars to watch out for. Hinamizawa, anyway. I dashed out the front door. The morning air was far more refreshing than the water on my face. That's right, Keichi Mebara. If you're sorry enough about it and reflect upon your mistakes, that's enough. Now let's pull yourself together and get to school. And return to fun, enjoyable days. Where everyone laughs, plays, and just has a good time. I'll be nice to Satoko as an apology, too. Yeah. Was I supposed to be here Nini -ni until Satoshi got back? Ohaya. Good morning. Gage kun Reina too looked nothing like she had yesterday when she said that weird stuff. It's uh, it's the inside that counts, my friend. That's what you should be concerned about. If I could only forget, then I could still act like nothing had happened. So I called out to her with all the energy I could muster. Oh. Hey. Oh, hi, Reina. Morning, Reina. I got us high, Reina. Early as usual today. Wow, I'm impressed. The conversation didn't didn't start on our way to school. Morning. Good morning. There was little time before the same old morning homeroom began, but Satoko and Rikuchen were unusually absent. They're absent, Satoko and Rika. Not unlike how they were suddenly absent at one point in Chapter 2 onward. Should I be concerned? Maybe they went to play somewhere. However, looking over and seeing none of their things. So it looked like they really hadn't come to school. Hmm? They're almost never late. 
Raina seemed to be enjoying herself thinking about what their excuse for being late would be. Mion said something nonsensical as well, imagining how funny the reason they were late must have been. You didn't do anything to them, did you, Mion? Because if you did, I'll go get a hatchet. I'd only come to school to see their energetic faces, since I figured it would get rid of these feelings I have. But the load on my chest remained where it was. It wasn't very pleasant at all. Good morning, everyone. Good, uh, good morning, good morning, curry fanatic. President, if you would. Everybody stand up! Our teacher finally arrived. Then finally, I heard the pitter-patter of footsteps running down the hall. Oh, thank God, you're not dead. Rika-chan was the first to run through the open door. And then Satoko, oh, thank God, she's not dead either. Didn't come. Maybe she is, and I should still be worried. You're late, Farood-san. Where's Hojo-san? It was unusual for Rika-chan to be late, but equally unusual for Satoko, a ball of energy, to be absent at all. Everyone's eyes were wide at the series of strange events. Satoko wa... Satoko might be a bit late. Has she come down with something? The teacher walked over to Rika Chan and they started talking in hushed tones. Rika Chan got to go to Satoko got to get sick. Rika-chan is late, and Satoko is absent. I guess crazy things can happen. You have no fucking idea. Or maybe you do. I don't know yet. You're right. But, I wonder what happened to Satoko-chan. I got a theory. Considering the last tip I learned in the last episode was about uh, Satoko's uncle appearing out of the woodwork and uh, going around town, maybe it has something to do with him. Is she sick? Why now, when I most wanted to see Satoko's energetic face? The unease that had been building since last night tightened within my chest. Kei-chan, you worry too much. Sometimes girls of her age can't help but stay home sick. <laughs> I hope that's all it is. Actually, on second thought, I hope that whatever, if it is a sickness, it's something mild. Mi-chan! But, I, but I'm not feeling optimistic right now. Mi-chan, you're not supposed to say that around boys. Mion laughed indecently. Normally I would laugh along with her. But right now I just didn't feel like it. Homeroom ended. And we went to talk to Rika Chan in the short time we had before first period started. Yo, Rika Chan. Hey, Rika Chan. You look so sad, so very sad when getting yelled at for being late. I'll make sure to pet you today. Keichi, my boy, my friend, my chum. You don't get it. Only Rika can do the petting. If somebody were to pet Rika for, for anything bad happening, the universe might implode on itself. 
Do you want do you want that to happen, Keiichi? Do you want the universe to implode? Do you want to kill us all? Then go right ahead. Pat her on the head. I was very aware of my gloom this morning, so I strove to keep my tone cheerful. I pat Rika-chan's head the same way she always did. In the universe imploding in three, two. But she didn't cheer up at all. Me. Well, you got a meep out of her, so that's something. What happens to Toko? Did she get sick? For instance, she got a fever from playing around too much yesterday. If that had been her response, I would have accepted it in a flash. Aww. The fact that you're being awfully silent about this is really making me concerned that I might actually be on to something. But the atmosphere around Rika-chan felt somehow heavy. It was a little weird and actually made my unease worse. Hora, hora, hora. Hey, come on, come on! There's certain things she can't talk to boys about. K-chan, back to your seat. Back to your seat. I see how it is. So if I got so if I got rid of this guy's penis, you would let him in on the conversation? Okay. Mion, acting just like a club president, pulled bat me back to my chair. Rika-chan's gaze immediately fell back to her desk, and she hung her head gloomily. Rika-chan had said something odd. That Satoko might be a little late. They were... living together, weren't they? Then she would have known for sure. She wouldn't, have, she wouldn't have said might. I didn't understand why she was absent. And that made me all the more anxious. Damn it, what's going on today? It's like we started off on the wrong foot and it wasn't going to get any better. Unfortunately, I think you're probably right, my friend. What's the matter, Keichi-kun? You seem pretty down this morning. Because the ball of energy called Satoko is nowhere to be seen. Reina noticed how I looked and whispered me while the teacher wasn't looking. Do I really seem that way? Yeah. Even Reina is starting to feel down just looking at you. I thought of jokingly saying, then don't look at me. But I didn't even feel like doing that. Is it something you can tell Reina? I don't know what you're worried about. But if I can help, then you can tell me, okay? I won't tease you. Reina said this, looking me straight in the eye. Until yesterday, nothing strange had happened, and it was a lot of fun. Huh? Reina's eyes widened for a moment, not understanding what I meant. But she remained silent and listened. It was peaceful and fun. Every day was lively. I never, I never had any doubt things would stay that way forever. Yeah. You're right. Every day is fun. I'm sure today will be too. You're sure? How do you know? Um, well. Reina, feeling perplexed, couldn't think of something to say. 
I didn't blame her. What I was trying to say seemed a little confusing, even to me. When I think about it, I've been anxious lately. Like, maybe, since every day is fun, one day, all of a sudden, it would get really dark, like a light bulb turned off. Yeah. Reina kind of understands how you feel. Do you? Reina nodded gently. We've always been taught that it wouldn't only be good things happening to us. Sometimes I'm scared of what's going on behind the fun. It's a little bit sad, but... But because of that, we learned how to do our best to make sure that the fun never stops. So I see. So it's not a bad thing that you think our fun lives might not go on forever, Keichi-kun. Kind of like... Mm. Like if suddenly there was a volcanic eruption tomorrow and everyone died. Well, that would certainly be a very big change of pace compared to the last two chapters. Hey, wait. That's terrible. If you were the only one who survived the catastrophe, Keiji-kun, how would you feel? Maybe... maybe something involving survivor's guilt? I don't know. With him, I guess it, I think it's possible. How would I... Hmm... I imagine myself being that sole survivor in the ruins of Hinamizawa. Rubble and the bodies of friends lying in heaps at my feet. It was such an abhorrent sight. Was it sadder that all my friends had died? Or was it sadder that I couldn't have died with them? I didn't know which. But I'd probably cry a lot. It'd probably break my heart. I think you should take out probably. First, I think I'd cry. And then maybe you would think this. If this was my destiny, then I should have made sure every day before this was as fun as possible, so I had no regrets. I didn't want to consider such a horrible event to be my destiny, but... I probably would think that. The fun times will end one day, and nobody knows when they will. It makes sense to live each day to the fullest, so that if it does happen tomorrow, you don't regret anything. Yeah. It's really hard to think like that. A lot of people take their everyday happiness for granted. 
今日できることを明日に送る。They think tomorrow will be the same as today, so they leave things they could do today for tomorrow. 今日してやれる優しさを明日に送ってしまう。They leave the kindness they could have shown today until tomorrow. Reina was usually cheerful and silly, but right now she wasn't like that at all. I wonder if the teacher has noticed you two yet. She was taking my trouble seriously. It was a little reassuring. But Keiichi kun, you realized it. I think that's a wonderful thing. So that unease you have. I think you should keep it close to your heart. But I don't like feeling uneasy. Keep my unease. Close? Yes. Everyone might die tomorrow in a big catastrophe. So you should be really nice to everyone today. So when the end really does come, you don't regret it. Do you do that, Reina? Live like you would have no regrets if everyone died tomorrow.、うん、yep. It was such a hyperbolic conversation. But Reina just gave me a nonchalant nod of her head. Reina was a nice day. I was a nice day. I was a nice day. Reina knows. What it's like for the fun times to end overnight. She knows there's no proof tomorrow will be fun, even if today is. I'm living life to the fullest. It seemed like Reina perfectly understood all the anxiety I couldn't put into words. And on top of that, Like a reliable teacher, she showed me what to do.、Oh. Hey, Keiichi Mebara. There's no need to cry now. Yube, Satoko no Yume o Mitaki ga するんだ Last night, I feel like I had a dream about Satoko. Donna Yume da ta ka, omoi da se nai kedo, asa kara zutto fuan de. I don't remember what kind of dream it was, but ever since this morning I felt anxious. Because you thought seeing Satoko chan's e r a j a c k face would cheer you up. Right? She was right on the money. If everyone had been here with smiles on their faces this morning, Then the murk in my heart would have definitely been blown to smithereens. Then, if Satoko chan arrives, you'll have to be nice to her.、Mm-hmm. Actually, it's totally fine if you play your usual pranks on each other. As long as you're having fun. Yeah, you're right. So that even if these fun days came to an end, I'd have no regrets. I couldn't tell if what Reina told me had been comforting or just made me more anxious. But it was enough to make me think that if I saw Satoko again, I'd be honest with her. Lunchtime arrived, with everyone pushing their desks together like always. Satoko wasn't here. Despite that, we had bento boxes for five lined up on our desks. Rikuchen had made a bento for Satoko, too. 
。さと子、お昼までには来るはずだったの。Was the taco supposed to be here before lunch? Come on, Rika, spill the beans. What is it? I think I already have an idea what it is. But confirm or deny it for me, please. Rika Chen was clearly acting strangely. We were talking to her, but felt like she was too far away to hear us. I'd never seen Rika Chen so downcast. So, the rest of us started feeling down too. Hey, Reyna. I understood what you said before pretty well. When we were together, we were supposed to have lots of fun so we wouldn't have any regrets if the world ended tomorrow. And yet, while I just resolved myself to do it, now we can't all be together. What the hell? Because. Because it was just so sudden, wasn't it? I mean, yesterday was fun, so who could believe it would all end today? Me. No volcanoes had erupted, and no earthquakes or fires had happened either. The cicadas were making the same noise as they did yesterday, and the sun remained bright in the sky. It was the same normal day as always. So then, why? As I pondered, Raina's chopsticks reached in front of my face and stole the fried chicken out of my bento. If no one else wants it, Raina will take it. <laughs> Thief! Hehe, <laughs> delicious! Raina tossed the entire piece into her mouth and began munching on it, her expression one of bliss. Such an old man. Raina got a leg up on me. Alright. This old man's taking a, uh, this bit of steak here. Meep. All my food is gone except my rice. They took all her food, you heathens. Rika chan, also behind the curve. Smiled again and went for someone else's bento. As I sat there, dazed at how quickly everyone had changed, Raina sent a wink over to me. Come on, Keiji Kun. Live life to the fullest. That way, if a volcano erupts tomorrow, it'll be okay. This is serious. I'll be damned if dried plums and rice are the only things I have for what left for lunch. I'm taking that meatball. I stuffed the meat into my mouth and constructed a clumsy smile. I played along as if trying to fool myself. But as I did, it rapidly became less and less of an act. Satoko still wasn't here. But at some point, we had regained our lively lunchtime. We had fun. We smiled. And we fooled around. I wish I could feel confident that the same is, is going on for Satoko right now. Thanks, everyone. This was definitely the best thing to do. This way, when Satoko suddenly dropped by, we could welcome her with our best smiles. The more I smiled, the more I felt the anxiety from this morning clearing away. Wasn't there a proverb that when something like fortune comes in by a merry gate? I think so. If it's true, then this old man will roll around the floor laughing 24-7. Better laughing than stabbing. Reina thinks it's true. If you laugh every day, it'll be fun every day. 
レナがいいことを言いますです。レナ has a way with words。じゃあ、試してみるか。Then, should we try it out? Everyone took a deep breath, then brought their faces together, locking shoulders. And then, <laughs> you went on a little too long, Keiichi. Everyone laughed uproariously from their stomachs, trying to laugh out all the bad stuff accumulating in them. By the time our bento boxes were empty, everyone was right as rain. Having heard our friendly banter, Tomata kun and Okamura kun walked up and timidly spoke to us. Excuse me, my Bara san. Sorry, Sorry to interrupt your fun, but. We need your help with something. They grinned dryly and scratched their heads. What could it be? I know how to, how to remove the sensor bars in porn magazines? Oh, like you would know how to do that. By the way, don't believe what you hear about Butter doing the, to doing the trick. Total superstition. You can't use an eraser either. Wait, what? Seriously? That's not what we're he we're that's not what we're here for, said Tomata kun, Abelwing Okamura kun. Um, actually Our ball got caught in the gutter of the second floor. We were thinking you might be able to reach it since you're tall. Oh, I see. Asking an upperclassman for help comes of its own price, you know. I'm not cheap. You can't buy me out so easily. Tomata kun and Okamura kun conversed for a short time, then gave their reply. We'll give you the right to take a nap during class, Meibara san. Like, I need you to give me that right. How does that sound? What do you mean? I can sleep during class whenever I want. Why do I need your permission for it? Oh, no, you can't. The next time you take a nap, we'll tell Sensei about it. <laughs> Don't you laugh at, laugh at my possible sleep deprivation. How sly. You little. Where'd you learn to bargain like that? You should probably look in the mirror, genius. Sorry. It was just a little joke. Come on, Kei-chan. Why not just cave into your underclassmen's threats? Because I am the upperclassman, and I gotta set an example for the rest of the underclassmen to follow. You don't want to appear weak now. I swear to God, you could be a witch. You have the rat. You have the life. The right laugh for it. And now Mion was getting on my nerves. Suddenly it came to me, and I took Tomata Kun and Okamura Kun's hands. All right, I surrender. I'll get your ball for you, so give me all the rights to nap time. 
Huh? Eh? Oh. Okay. Look, Mion. I now have the privilege. But you don't, do you? Tomita-kun, Okamura-kun. Tell on Mion as soon as she falls asleep. Got it? Yeah! Atta boys! Reina and Rikichan began to cackle at Keiji-kun's victory. I wasn't sure how the ball managed to get stuck up there, but it was planted firmly in the school's building's second floor gutter. Hand me that stick. I should be able to reach it. Here we go. I took a bamboo pole and poked the ball with it. Damn, it's hard. Come on. Oh, he got it! You got it, Maybara san! Thank you so much! The ball rolled down the gutter and fell down behind the school building. My underclassmen ran over in that direction, leaving me by myself. Mission complete, I guess. There's still a lot of time left until lunch break was over. Guess I guess I should go back to the classroom. I'd absorb myself in a silly conversation to everyone and wait for the af for afternoon classes. Just when that th just when I thought that and turned towards the entrance, someone suddenly called out to me. Domo domo, konnichiwa. What do you need want with me this time? It's not like anybody's well actually yes, yeah, somebody is dead. I mean we found the course was found right at the very fucking beginning of, the, of chapter three, but I mean like what could I possibly have to do with, with with any of it this time? Hello there. Good day. Sorry for bothering you during your lunch break. It was a middle-aged man I didn't know. Or maybe I'd passed by him a few times, and I'd seen his face. But I didn't know him. When his half-smile deepened, something within me shuddered with fear. I think you should listen to that feeling very, very closely, and do whatever it tells you to do. Because chances are, I'm not gonna like what he's gonna ha what he's gonna be talk to us about either. There was no basis for that, no reason. But I shuddered. I was somewhat confused about these about those emotions, not quite understanding them myself. There was one thing I could say, though. Nobody but teachers and students should be at school. This person shouldn't have been here. I felt like... It's about Satoko, isn't it? You're asking because, well, we're her friends. Did something happen to her? I felt less of a tremble, and more of a sense of dread, like a brilliantly colored poisonous caterpillar were crawling across my forehead. A feeling of disgust that neither itchy nor gross could describe as the frizzly, dreadful hair rubbed against my brow. I didn't even want to see his face. I wanted to jump backwards and run away. An unpleasant feeling, for which I didn't even know the cause. The other side of myself has nothing but questions. Hey, what are you doing? What are you disgusted by? This is the first time you've met him. 
putting a lot of emphasis on these feelings of fear and even disgust with him, even though this is technically the first time you've met him this time around. I wonder. Every single chapter up until now, including what we're seeing here, is different. Is in in both is both fundamentally different and fundamentally similar to each other. Like we got several key events that are very similar that that we've seen occur so far in each chapter, while others, well, are pretty different. But the end results are the same. In this case, when it comes to um, our good old detective here, he pops into existence, starts talking, starts uh, asking questions to Keiichi or otherwise interacting with him in some way, and then we start learning all kinds of, ba of bad shit. And then once that happens, everything starts going south real quickly. There's got to be a reason, like I've, like I've stated before when I thought about this last time, there's got to be a reason all these chapters are both similar and yet at the same time different to each other. Are you remembering what happened in the other chapters in, to some capacity, Keiichi? Like an alternate timeline kind of thing? You did, you did also say that you were having nightmares last night too, but you couldn't remember what they were about, but they felt but they left you with a terrible sense of dread too or feeling or or at least feeling terrible. And coincidentally, that that you're starting to have these nightmares around the time that you started asking very serious questions about things that you probably be better off not knowing, like in the first two chapters. And yet, this time around, the third time, around the time that starts happening again, now you're having nightmares of things you can't remember. They leaves you with a terrible feeling that something bad's going to happen. Now, the, to, now Ushi shows up, and those feelings basically skyrocket when you look at him. You gotta be remembering something here, I think, from the other two chapters. That's, I'm gonna go with that theory. All, the, all these chapters are definitely alternate continuities uh, continuities or different or different timelines that coincide with each other in some way and now what Ke this feeling that Keishi's having maybe he's recalling something from from them the ones we've seen so far if I'm if I'm right then well things will certainly get very interesting to say the least. If I'm wrong, then well, I'm wrong. One way to find out. It's rude to hate someone for no reason. No answers were coming. I held my silence, waiting, a damp sweat running down my forehead. When he saw that, Ushi thought maybe he was, he was being intimidating and gave me a relaxed smile. Oh, please wait a minute. Middle aged man, you show up. Felt less of a tremble, you never seen him. Unpleasant feeling. This first time you've met him. Held my silence. When he saw it with that, Ushi thought maybe he was being intimidating and gave me a relaxed smile. And now your name appears, like... Oh, please excuse me. I'm, I'm no one suspicious, I assure you. <laughs> maybe I'm reading too much into this particular snippet right here, but... I find it interesting that... You suddenly seem to know his name right before he, r literally a second before he introduces himself proper. 
again, maybe I'm reading too much into this, and it could just be a little writing thing, a, a little a slip from the writers or something, for all I know, of the story. But if it's not, then it would also kind of coincide with what I was just speculating, that you're remembering stuff. In this case, you're remembering him. Oh, oh, please excuse me. I'm no one suspicious, I assure you. Hmm. <laughs> I'm Uushi, from Okinomiya Police Department. Wait, where did I put my card? Hmm. Huh? What? This is... What? He fished through various pockets, then finally found his police ID and showed it to me, grinning dryly. He may have been trying to use those clumsy seeming actions to ease my anxiety, but I could definitely say it didn't work. Why was I this nervous? There was a reason, of course. If I wanted today to be the same as before, then today didn't need someone who hadn't been here back then. The fact that a man who wasn't here yesterday showed up today meant that today would be a different day than those before it. That would mark the end of fun and happy days. Outside of outside of context, I would say that you're be that you're being overly resistant to any kind of change. But yeah, it's just it's just funny to me taking these some of these remarks out of context. Out of context, excuse me, because it just makes it sound like as though Keiichi is just overly paranoid of any kind of change whatsoever occurring in his life. I gulped and erased that ominous conclusion from my mind. Calm down, Keiichi Mebara. It was just it's just an old guy. It looks kinda of perverted and came from the police department. Don't go deciding that the fun times are over. He just came here because of his job. Yeah, just for his job. If he's working, then he would normally go to the teacher's lounge, right? The fact that he spoke to me. Yes, it must have been to ask where it was. Are you looking for the teacher's lounge? You just have to go through the entrance and... I didn't want to look at this man for another second, so I started pushing things along. Uji, however, didn't seem to have any interest in the teacher's lounge. Ah, yeah, yeah. Oh no. Uh, I don't have anything to do there. I was afraid you'd say that. Could I get you to call a friend of yours, if I may be so bold? <laughs> a friend? Who? A girl. Could you call Satoko Hoju? Could you call Satoko Hoju San for me? I fucking knew it. I knew it had something to do with Satoko. I called it, and I don't like that I did. My consciousness grew faint, like I was about to pass out. Yes, my anxiety was realized. The dreadful, disgusting caterpillar was looking at me, about to crawl into my ear. Its frizzy, dreadful hair was touching my ear cavity. That's how bad it felt. What do the police need with Satoko? No, no, no. It's nothing important. I don't believe you. I just had two or three things to ask. I'd like it if you could cooperate with me. Why? Why? 
Of all people, was it Satoko? Why would a police officer come here in the middle of the day for something that wasn't important? This man was strange. I could smell it. It smelled bad. Just a whiff of it made me want to grimace. I knew that this man couldn't possibly be here to deliver her lost wallet or anything. I couldn't imagine what he needed from Satoko, but it had to be something unpleasant. Uh. Uh. My throat stung with burning pain. Burned like a parched, creviced wasteland. The wasteland broke apart in my th deep in my throat and brought out the words from deep in my mind. Uh, um, you may need something from her, but I don't think Satoko needs anything from you. Could you please leave? Ushi probably hadn't expected that reply. He stood there surprised for a few moments. I did as well. I hadn't thought words like that could ever come out of my mouth. Things might still work out. This guy may have shown up out of the blue, but if I drove him off, maybe I could make it so that it never happened. Very wishful thinking. If I could do that, then I could get back. The peace we had until yesterday. I could get it back. Naive child. <laughs> well, well. You sure are strict. Are you Satoko-san's manager, perhaps? Can I not see her without an appointment? <laughs> if you just want to talk to her, shouldn't you just call her? Barging into school in the middle of the day isn't normal. Breaking through a dam would have been a perfect, the perfect analogy to use. Why didn't I like this man? This man shouldn't have been here. I need to make it so that this man wasn't here. Yeah, I'm really starting to think that maybe he might be remembering Ushi. Probably from the other chapters. Because, again, he keeps stressing that he, lo that he knows that there is absolutely no logical reason whatsoever that he should be feeling about Ushi the way he does right now. And yet, he does. And he's so much, in fact, that he wants to do everything he can to drive him away. What else? It's got to be something like that. Or, or maybe there's something else I'm not considering here. But I don't know what else to think right now. Childish, selfish emotions bubbled up from the depths of my mind. And they each came out of my mouth just as it had been formed. Not liking the guy was my own problem. But to say things so bluntly to him, even I thought I was crazy. Alia. Oh. You're the logical sort, aren't you? More like unlogical. I'm not too good with people who talk like that. Ushi grinned and scratched at his sweaty throat. Even as he feigned stupidity, I could tell he was irritated. Hey, Kechimebara. Why am I looking for a fight with this old policeman here? It's not like he brought the gift of misfortune with him all wrapped up in paper, right? Right. It wasn't like he had brought a package of misfortune with him and was asking me to sign here, please. Well, I think that's exactly what he's doing. 
Rationally speaking, I understood all that. So then, why was I so... Finally, I outlasted Uushi in our game of silence, and he gave a big sigh. Then he addressed a few of my female underclassmen running around nearby. Uh, oh, excuse me, all of you. Do you have a moment? I'd like you to call Satoko Ho Hoju-san, Hoju -san, if you could. Uh. My underclassmen tried to smile in reply, but they noticed the oddly stiff air, a stiff air atmosphere around me, and seemed to, to, hesitant to give a quick answer. Is she not here? Hojo Satoko san. Satoko Hoju san. Etto, Hojo san wa kyo wa. Um, Hoju-san, she stayed home today. Yasumi. Stayed home. His face remained smiling, but his tone was clearly one of ill humor. Are you blind, man? Does that look like a smile to you? Such a conspicuous spite caused my underclassmen, who had answered honestly, Cringe in fear. So this guy. I see. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Dear me, dear me. I'm quite unlucky. He was smiling broadly, but the way he laughed didn't make me feel better at all. When he noticed that his laughter wasn't getting anyone else to laugh with him, he immediately stopped. The... So, Kimitachi. you girls, could you, tell... could you tell me the name of this boy here? Mm -hmm. He grabbed the girls by the shoulders so they wouldn't run away and crouched down to address them at eye level. The girls flinched away from the sharp, piercing light in his eyes. In exchange for their release, they didn't resist and told him my name. Ooh. I see. Maebara Keiichi-san desu ka? Keiichi san is that it? He said my full name. That was all he said, and yet I couldn't help but shudder. It was like he grabbed me by the collar just with those words. <gasps> oh, could you be the son of the Maybara family I've heard so much about? I hear your father is a renowned artist. His works go on display twice a year in the Great Exhibition in Tokyo, don't they? I don't know what sort of fantastic pictures he creates, though. Then there's, then there's your mother. She seems intelligent, too. I heard she was a high academic achiever. She went to some girls' university, didn't, didn't she? You've clearly done your homework on me already. Interesting. It's amazing for someone that age to have graduated from a girls' university. Could your mother actually be the daughter of a respectable family? At least those are the rumors. And they say she's a cold person because of it. Did you know that? 
Cold is not the impression I get from Mommy Dearest, so I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. She only went to the very first neighborhood association meeting, right? That's certainly no good. You can't disrespect your neighbors in a place like this. <laughs> Please don't laugh at that. A sense of eeriness slithered up my spine. This was my first experience of true terror. I couldn't believe it felt this terrible for someone you've just met to know everything about you already. Ushi clamped onto my shoulders and brought his eyes close to peer into mine. In a place like this, it would be far better not to make enemies, wouldn't it? If not... Ow! Wuxi dug into my shoulders with inhuman strength. Gah! Police brutality! Then if something unexpected were to happen, you might see some drawbacks. Have you ever heard of karma? It's like how a butterfly flapping its wings can cause a tornado. Grudges born in strange places could come back and could come back to haunt you in ways you wouldn't believe. So you wouldn't like that, would you? <laughs> Nobody wants to have a grudge held against them. There is nothing positive about making enemies. Hmm? Hmm. What's the matter? Your shoulders are very stiff. Well, you're not helping with that, I can promise you that. Should I give you a massage? See? Feels good, right? <laughs> ow, 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 ow! This man wasn't just strong. It was like he knew exactly where to press to make me feel pain. Well, he is a police detective. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure, given his experience, he's had plenty of, of, of opportunity to learn about uh, pain about pain points in a person's body. Is that even a phrase, a term? Probably not. Yeah. Only four or five were on my shoulder. Fingers were on my shoulders, and yet the pain. And you want to bend over backwards. Ugh. A few of the girls from my class were pretty shaken up, but didn't seem to want to help me. They weren't sure if they should go call the teacher. That would be preferable. As for me, I couldn't take the time to wait till the teacher got here. It, it hurts! Would you mind leaving things at that? Pervy coach! You came to save me! You're hurting him. Huh? Hmm? Behind Uushi's sand. Someone, to my disbelief, it was Coach. 
Oh yeah. Oh my. If isn't Dr. Eerie a doctor? This guy is a PhD? It certainly has been a while since we were last in touch. <laughs> Discomforted by Coach's sudden appearance, Ushi laughed scornfully. The vice on my shoulders, however, remained as strong as ever. Never mind the greetings. Please, just let go of my Barakun. Ushi smiled daringly and glared straight at Coach. He didn't release me in the meantime, of course. I was just thinking of stopping by your place later, Doctor. You always seem so busy, and we can never have a good chat. Yes. If you want, I'll chat with you all you like. But, please be sure to have a warrant first. After all, otherwise, I can refuse to voluntarily. I, I can refuse to go voluntarily into questioning. Coach didn't display a shred of the weird behavior he'd shown at the baseball game and barbecue. He stared steadily at Oushi and fought so that he would release me. His chances were terribly bad, of course. Compared to the relaxed Ushi, Coach seemed like he was being defeated mentally. It made sense. Coach had a somewhat narrow stature, but Ushi's body was packed with muscles. You're also forgetting the blubber. It wasn't even a contest. But... Coach was fighting for me, without taking a step back. Beads of sweat formed on his face. And though he paled, he was fighting for my sake. <sighs> Suddenly, Wushi laughed and let go of my shoulders. My body exhausted, I fell right onto my backside. My Barakun. My Barakun. Are you alright? Uh, yeah. Damn it. Ow. I rubbed my shoulders where Ushi had latched onto them. The pain from falling over went away quickly, but this pain was lingering. My Barakun. Are you alright, my Barakun? This is terrible. Shit. Ow. Ow. I was just giving him a little massage. <laughs> My Barakun, aren't you over exaggerating a bit? <laughs> Boys have got to learn to man up. <laughs> I want to retort, but I couldn't think of anything witty. Can you lift your shoulders? Are they in pain? If you're really hurt, then you should have a proper checkup. Let's go to the nurse's office. Coach lent me his shoulder and walked beside me. Oh, guess I this What an exaggeration. I'd be the last person to do any sort of permanent damage. Right. I'm still an active police officer, you know. <laughs> さあ, 
どんな御用があったか存じませんがもう御用がないならお帰りを Come I don't know what you needed to be here for but if you're finished then please leave 今日のことは今度所長さんに直接抗議しますからそのつもりでいてください I'm going to complain about this directly to the chief so please keep that in mind それは困りますね Oh, that's a problem, ain't it? <laughs> Ushi Sen waved his hand sarcastically, pivoted around, and headed to the car parked by the school gates. And without turning back around, he got in and started the engine. Damn it. So you're able to take your, your complaints directly to the chief of police. Are you、um, affiliated with the police, with、uh, the police force in any way, coach? He referred to you as doctor, so are you like a coroner or something? Who, who the hell was he? Damn it! He's, he's a detective named Kuradu、uh, Ushi. ね、And a hooligan. Everyone in the village hates him. Maibara san, you should be careful too. Kuraldo. Who is she? Just like I thought. My gut instinct wasn't wrong. He would be the one. The one to bring unhappiness, misfortune, something that would ruin our peace. I think you're right, but for the wrong reasons. And also, all he really is at the end, all he really was during the last two chapters was just basically a hard, a hard ass investigator. It's not like as though he directly caused anything to happen. Shit. I won't accept it. All these fun days can't possibly end just because some guy like him showed up. I won't. I won't accept it! Coach seemed to be familiar with the school, so he brought me to the nurse's office without too much trouble. The girls from my class came along as well, looking worried. Our teacher and the principal. Having noticed a disturbance, came to see what was the matter. Maebara kun. Maebara kun. What's wrong? Are you hurt? Etto, etto. Um, well. Maebara san, saki kote de hen na oji san ni. There was this weird man in the schoolyard just now, and Maebara san. Coach gently interrupted the girls trying to explain. Ye. No. Chotto koron de hinetta mi tai desu. It、looks like he just fell and twisted something. I think he's alright, but I wanted to make sure. If it's, if it's fine with you, I'll borrow the nurse's office for a bit. Hmm. Hmm. Please do, Dr. Irie. The principal gave him a deep bow. It looked like Coach was acquainted with the adults at school. He slid open the doors to the nurse's office, but there wasn't a nurse in there or anything. I figured. I never seen anyone but Chi Sensei and the principal working here. Coach didn't seem to mind the fact that there was no nurse and quickly made his way into the nurse's office. He instructed me to sit down and start washing his hands in the sink. Oh, I get it. He's the coach for the boys' baseball team. He must be, he must be pretty used to treating wounds with first aid. Then why, the, then why the doctor title, then, if that's all it is? Could you show me where it was? Are you still in pain? No. It doesn't hurt at all anymore. I'm fine, really. I rolled up my shirt and showed him my shoulder. No bruise. 
Not even nail marks. And yet it hurt so much I thought my shoulders would be crushed. Even the pain had disappeared without a trace. It hurt so much, but not so much as a bruise remained. It just means he's used to doing that. Used to it, huh? The next time you meet, don't provoke him. Nothing good will come of making him angry. Clearly. If you go home with a uniformed policeman by your side, your family won't like that, will they? Well, you're right. Still, what happened? Why did you end up in a fight with him? Gut instinct! Impossible, impossible, timey, whiny, bull, timey, whiny bullshit. He came up and said he needed something from Satoko. Eh? Huh? Satoko chan ni. Satoko chan. Kochi's gaze lowered and his expression clouded a bit. Somehow that gesture seemed to be saying Ushi was bound to come to Satoko and did. And that it was no laughing matter. <sighs> Coach fell silent in thought. Quietly, he took a compress out of the first aid kit and put it on me. <laughs> Did he still plan on clinging to Satoko chan? He's a persistent man, I'll give him that. Like a snake. What do you mean by clinging to Satoko? Coach mumbled to himself. Cling? Does that Aushi guy go to Satoko's place a lot? <laughs> Coach didn't answer. But the lack of a denial served well enough. What on earth did the policeman, probably a detective or something, he... What do you mean probably? I mean, he just told you he's a, de a detective. Need from Satoko. What mistake had led to a detective to cling to the sweetly smiling Satoko? Maibara-san wa... Sōka. Maibara-san. Oh, right. You just moved here, didn't you? Uh, yeah. Yes. I did, but... Have you heard anything about... Oishiro-sama's curse and about Satoko-chan? Yes, actually. So, let me guess. Uishi, uh... Quote, a quote, clings to Satoko because of what happened with Satoshi and her parents. Well, I knew a few things about it, certainly. Satoko's parents were damn proponents. And their accidental death was because of the curse. You mean that? Coach smiled thinly and dryly. So you know, he said, dropping his gaze. If I recalled correctly, there was an accident on a viewing platform at the public park she'd gone to with her family, and her parents died. And then, it was just big brother and little sister. And then she was with Rika-chan, and... Um... When they lost their parents, Satoko-chan and her brother, Satoshi-kun, were given to their uncle and his wife to care for them. Uh... Oh, is that so? 
Their, par their parents died in the accident and Satoshi ran away, leaving only Satoko to start living with Rika-chan. I know that much, but this is the first time I heard they've been brought they've been brought to their uncle and aunt. Oji to you no wa Satoko chan no otou san no otouto ni ataru kata nan desu ka ne. Their uncle was Satoko chan's father's younger brother. Zanen na koto ni fufu sorotte chotto sonkei ni atai suru kata gata dewa arimasen deshita. Unfortunately, neither of the couple were people deserving of respect. Well, apparently, also neither were Satoko's parents, because apparently they treated uh, Satoko like crap too. Coach normally picked his words politely, so when he came out and said they didn't res deserve respect, it really made me wonder what kind of people they were. Satoko-chan's family was in the dam and was in the dam. The father and the father were in the dam, so they were in the dam, so they were in the dam, so they were in the dam. As soon as Satoko Chan's parents came out in support of the dam, their uncle and aunts took on a lot of the shame in the village as well. Satoko Chan Tachio Kangye Sir Hazmo Nakatan des. They would never have welcomed in Satoko Chan and Satoshi Kun. Satoko Chan Tachi Kyodai ni tote, totemo tsurai seikatsu datta to kiki o yonde imas. I've heard that for the siblings, it was a very rough life. Yeah, but I mean, how is that Satoshi and Satoko's fault? Like, you can't, you can't just be unwelcoming towards them because of what their parents did. It's not fair. Bit by bit, Coach told me about the numerous ag agonies the, Ho the Hoju siblings had suffered at their uncle's house. As their guardians, their aunt and uncle sucked up everything belonging to their immediate family. Satoko and Satoshi were crammed into a small room and their lives were laden with things that were miserable both for their bodies and minds. In the first place, since apparently their aunt and uncle weren't on good terms, there was no end to their fighting. And as if in revenge for that, whenever they saw Satoko or Satoshi's face, they would always find fault with them, scold them, yell at them, strike them, and take away meals as punishment. What a fucking shitty environment to grow up in. Holy f I still shudder to think about it. Now,今の元気なサトコちゃんしか知らないあなたには土系色の顔をしてただ日陰でぼーっとしているだけの彼女などそうぞうもつかないでしょ。You'd never known any Satoko but the energetic and healthy one now. So you probably couldn't imagine her face being so deftly pale. A girl always standing dazed in the shade of trees. I couldn't imagine it. And I didn't want to. That's how I honestly felt. But at the very least, Satoko wasn't like that anymore. She may have had a miserable life in the past. But it was different now. Something happened to change that life. Last, last year, on the night of the Watanagashi Festival, their aunt died. She was beaten to death by a deviant. A baseball bat. Watanagashi no matsuri no yoru ni wa, mura no kyuteki ga tatari de shimu to uwasa sarete mashita kara ne. Rumors spread of the curse having killed an enemy of the village on the night of the festival. Kono shimo, tan naru satsujin jiken to shite dake de naku, oyashiro sama no tatari dewa nai ka to, mura jiu de sasaya kare mashita. This death wasn't a simple homicide either. They whispered that it was actually Orishiro sama's curse. A few days later, the deviant arrested for drug use confessed to further offenses, and the incident was resolved. However, though it was resolved, no one knew whether the part about being Orishiro-sama's curse was true or not. Their uncle is part of Hinamizawa, after all. He 
he apparently grew incredibly frightened of Orishirasama's curse and went into hiding. From what I've heard, he's staying with an, int with an intimate lady friend somewhere in Okinomiya. And Satoko and Satoshi, were they released? Their aunt died, and their uncle fled. There was nobody left to torment the siblings then, but... As if picking up their torch, that man starts showing up with alarming tenacity. Uushi, you mean? That man? Then Koch lowered his voice just a bit, as if being aware of his surroundings. Oishi desu. I mean Uushi. Oishi. Oishi. Sakki no otoko. The guy from before. The events that just occurred came back to me. The hard to describe ominous sensation I'd felt from him came back to me. Aitsu wa sukoshi okashii n desu yo. He's a little strange. The chain of incidents surrounding Uyashiro-sama's curse have all been solved. Yet he alone doesn't want to accept that. I'm not, he's not the only one. They don't seem very solved to me, personally. Accept it. The incidents were all solved, and a detective supposedly with the police department didn't accept that? People say that something bad will surely happen to those he gets close to. In Hinamizawa, they think Uushi is Urishiro Sama's curse bringer? Oh, speaking of cur oh, speaking of curses and demons and shit. Hey, Mion. The door flew open for rattle, and Mion came rushing in. Reina and Rika came Chan came running in a few steps behind her, and then Tomata kun Okamura-kun, and a few of more of our classmates. K Chan. K Chan. Did Ushi do something to you? Kego. He just gave me a really deep tissue massage. He's fine. I'm, I mean, I'm fine. Are you hurt? Calm down, Mion-san. He's not injured. I only gave him a compress, just in case. Keichi-kun, are you really okay? Okay? Everyone was saying stuff about how you were being strangled. Strangled through the shoulders! Calm down, Reina. You just squeezed my shoulders really hard. See, there's not even a bruise. Jeez. What the heck were you all doing? We're friends, right? Why were you just standing around? Why didn't you help Kei-chan? We're sorry, President. Mion yelled at her classmates, barring her fangs. Baring her fangs. Tomotakun and the others hung their heads in silence. Quit it, Mion. Tomotakun and the others weren't even there. Stop blaming them. Damn it! She's mad. Mion kicked the floor for heel a few times. Her temper running hot. Our teacher, overhearing a commotion, arrived as well. 
こらこらこら。Hey, come on, everyone. 保健室で騒がしくしてはいけません。Don't make so much noise in the nurse's office. 委員長、みんなを連れて保健室から出なさい。President, take everyone and leave, please. ほらみんな。Come on, everyone. もう行こう。Let's get going. ケイチ君は大丈夫だって。ケイチ君は大丈夫だって。ほら、みーちゃんも。You too, Mi chan. Mion was letting her emotions get the best of her. So Reina stepped in instead and led everyone out of the nurse's office. The detective from Okinomiya Station, Kurodu Ushi. It looked like the first impression I'd gotten from him hadn't been mistaken. Satogo's absence had amplified the vague apprehensions I'd felt since yesterday. And Ushi's appearance basically sealed the deal. Sate. All right. I'll get going. I originally came here for Chi Sensei. Ah, Yoji got the Gakko ni kitan desu yo ne. Ah, so you had something to do here. Ore nanka no tame ni, domo sumimasen deshita. Sorry for causing you trouble. Don't be so humble, he said. Smiling easily. There was a side benefit to all this. I was lucky enough to experience so much of your soft, silky skin, Meibara-kun. Stop using lotion. Deny him the, de de deny him the pleasure of soft skin. With the usual, for coach anyway, parting words, he instead continued. Please excuse me. You weren't wounded badly, but please avoid putting pressure on your shoulders or anything along those lines. If you get a high fever or it starts to swell, Contact me right away, okay? I don't think it'll happen, though. Oh, that's right, coach. Before everyone came in, you were going to say something. About what people think Uishi is to Uishiro sama. As he was about to leave the nurse's office, Coach placed a hand on the door and stopped. Ah, Oyashiro-sama no tsukai desu yo. Right. They think he's Oyashiro-sama's servant. Well, I really don't think that's the case. Going by what, going by the previous chapters. Mochiron, warumuchi desu ga ne. They're just bad mouthing him, though. Oyashiro-sama no tsukai. Uishiro-sama's servant. Maibara-san wa Hinamizawa de maitoshi watanagashi no yoru ni okoru Hinamizawa mura renzok kaishi jigen. Tsushou, Oyashiro-sama no tatari no koto wa gozonji desu ka? Do you know about the serial freak death incidents that occur in Hinamizawa every year on the night of the Watanagashi festival? Otherwise known as Oishiro-sama's curse. Eh? What? Freak deaths. What? Now that I thought about it, I did seem to remember overhearing Mion or someone in class talking about it like a ghost story. On the festival day in June, one person would always die, and another person would be spirited away. But they seemed to call it demoning away here. What a fine story that was. I figured they made it up to scare me, but it was true. Ittai, doko no dare ga ii dashita no ka mo wakaranai hanashi desu ga. I don't have any idea who first suggested this. Itsu no koro kara ka, Oishi no koto o Oyashiro sama no tsukai to yobu yo ni narimashita. But at some point, everyone started calling Ushi Oyashiro sama's servant. Nozhe desu ka? Why? Ano otoko ga. その年のたたりの犠牲者を決めている
because the rumors go that he decides the, the sacrifices for the curse every year. That's actually more. That's actually a more comical mental image than it probably should be. Whenever June came around, Uushi would start playing, paying frequent visits to Hinamizawa. Because Uushi had been persistently questioning most of the dead or disappeared people. Four years ago, it was known that the victim of the dismemberment, rumored to be the sacrifice, had been seen Uushi numerous times leading up to the incident. The damn form, the damn four men, and Ushi. Really interesting. Three, the sacrifices three years ago were Satoko's parents. Right before their accidental deaths, Ushi had apparently visited their home. The one who disappeared two years ago was Rika-chan's mother. And again, people know that before she vanished, Ushi had been talking to her extremely frequently. Interesting. The one who disappeared last year. Satoko's older brother, Satoshi. Satoshi, too, had apparently been approached by Ushi many times before he vanished. And just like with the first chapter, he approaches me, starts getting close to me, and then, well, I die. Hmm. That is certainly a very interesting coincidence. That's those. Those are very interesting coincidences. Again, I have no reason to think that it, he's actually going around doing what everybody here in Hinamizawa is suspecting that he's doing. Especially with what I've what I frequently see of him off camera, so to speak, during tip segments. But that is very a very interesting no. That he. He basically was frequently visiting each and every one of the victims from each year's incident before they either were killed or disappeared altogether. That's very fascinating to me. And then this year, this time, Ushi was trying to contact Satoko. This, this isn't a freaking joke. The rumors, Meibara-san. There's just some rumors to that effect. <laughs> I hope that's all they are. And I'm sure they are, but you never know. There might be an off chance that maybe Ushi is a, basically a demon servant all, this entire time and he's fooled everybody, including me. And yeah. Pretty much that. I hadn't said that because of the rumors of Uushi being Urashirasama's servant, or is contacting someone foreshadowing who would be the sacrifice that year. It was because the ominous hatred I felt toward Uushi was becoming more substantiated, more real. Um, today, Satoko, she was absent today. Wait, really? That looked like news to Coach. I thought I had thought he might have known why Satoko was absent today, but then I'll get going. You should, go... you should go back to the others and put their minds at ease. You're right. I will. Ladder. Coach left the nurse's office and headed towards the teacher's lounge. Hmm. Oh, we're already done with the chapter. New tips unlock research notes and Ushi's post memo.
Well, I wasn't expecting things to end quite this soon. I guess what I'll do is I'll just check out the tips, and then we can call it, a, and then we can call it a day for this episode. Research notes: the Hoju family. Every year, Orishirasama's curse claims two victims. Except for except for Chapter Two's events, this means that with four years in a row, there might have been eight now. But it's worthwhile to note half of them have been members of this family. Note, the curse on the second year, a certain falling accident, involved the death of Hoju, a dam proponent, and the disappearance of his wife. She was pronounced dead the following year after being considered to have vanished under perilous circumstances. The curse on the fourth year involved the death of the Hoju sibling's aunt, who was then their foster mother, and the disappearance of the elder brother. The Hoju family is a poor one, and it's hard to say Mr. Hoju's job went very well. Apparently, upon reemployment via family connections, there was a plan for them to return to the home of the mother's side of the family. For Mr. Hoju, the eviction due to Hinomiz the Hinomizawa Dam project and the payment of a large amount of compensation money was essentially a windfall. Mr. Hoju access aggressively accepted the Ministry of Construction's negotiations from an early stage, and selected others from Hinomizawa who were also dam proponents. It was rumored he had been bought out by the Ministry of Construction for doing so, but the truth is unknown. However, the dam's proponents were in the vastly outnumbered minority. In addition, as the Sonozaki family strengthened, it strengthened its own foundation and promised support against the dam, all the proponents say for Mr. Hoju switched over to the anti-dam side. Like the cowards you are, you decide to switch sides when it becomes obvious that you were clearly outnumbered. Strong convictions you people have. At this point, Hinamizawa was completely united against the dam. And Mr. Hoju was held up to ridicule as a stooge of the dam project's proponents. He was essentially used as a scapegoat for the anti-dam coalition. In the end, the dam project collapsed before Shirasama's curse and the dismemberment incident. However, punishment towards the bitter enemy supporting the dam project con continues to this day. There are not many left today who supported the dam project nor who had a negative reputation at the time. If there were any candidates left for the curse, it's the husband of the housewife who was beaten to death last year, Tepei Hoju, and Mr. Hoju's daughter, Satoko Hoju. Strangely, these two are the only candidates left. Will this year's curse come down on the two of them? It fucking better not, or I'm not going to be happy. I, to, if it comes down to Toko, I mean, from what I from what I know of the uncle, I probably won't. I probably won't really. I don't. I don't think I'm going to really care all that much about the uncle at all, because frankly, he sounds like he 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 most likely deserves it anyway. But Satoko? no, not the ball of energy. There is more than than enough value in observing them both. And Ushi's post memo. To Ushi san. There was a call for you from Section 4's Chief Sh uh, Shigiharu. Apparently, the slaughtered corpse in the o Ojikawa River is related to the S group, as we thought. We're still verifying what happened behind the scenes, but apparently, the deceased fi filed filed up dozens of self-created fictional bank accounts to their limits with money from the S group, reaching around 100 million yen. Damn. It appears there were three or four men with former S group connections involved in this. They've already disappeared along with millions of yen. 
The deceased was tortured on that point for information, and she was clearly slaughtered as an example to others. There are apparently some real wizards chasing down the people who disappeared. They're also spreading letters related to Yakuza groups not to harbor them. There's still no evidence that Tepei Hoju is one of those people. From what Chief Shi Shigaharu has seen, nothing's been announced. For such a dependent, the man wasn't trusted at all. Tepei Hoju has left his apartment in Okinomiya and has returned to his former residence in Hinamizawa. So, he's in, so he is in Hinamizawa then, and he's at his former residence. Then that has, then that's gotta have something to do with why Satoko didn't show up today. It just has to. Hmm. So, Wushi talked to every single person involved in the, in the, in the uh, serial freak incidents before their respective deaths or disappearances. Once again, that's a very interesting coincidence. And apparently now, uh, and apparently now Satoko's uncle is now living in Hinamizawa again. I, I'm pretty sure that more unpleasant stuff is going to start happening with, from the, start happening starting with the next episode. And I'm, part of me is kind of dreading to see what exactly is going to happen. But whatever's coming our way, we'll save it for next time. Because I'm going cut, to cut to, I'm going to cut the episode off here. I hope you guys enjoyed this latest episode of uh, Higurashi When They Cry, Chapter 3. If you did and you want to see more content from me, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I will see you all next time. Take care.